Okay guys, so I'm in a bathtub <laughs> to record this video because this bathroom is pretty small and for two of us to be in here recording and showing everything that we're going to do, I, we couldn't figure out, out where else I could stand and not block what I need to show you. So I'm sitting in my bathtub right now. But our project for today, now that we've finished the roughing in all the plumbing um, for the tub and shower, is we need to enclose the bathtub here um, and make a little wall right here and then also make a wall on this side to enclose our plumbing and then eventually we will also add a topper right here but our plan for these two walls is to kind of make a little play or you know modify our design of our pocket door so I don't know a year or so ago <laughs> We made these pocket doors with these vertical slats in them, which is a three quarter inch piece of plywood with um, on the back. And then uh, this is another layer of three quarter inch in slats on top of that. Um, we're gonna do the same idea, except for using half inch on half inch. And that will kind of fill the space between our framework that we made and the lip of the tub. We have an inch in there, so two half inch layers. And instead of doing vertical slats, we're gonna do horizontal slats. So that's what we're working on right now. We're gonna start with this piece here. Um, it needs to go up under this lip and give this a nice surface to kind of support this and it's going to be a little bit of an odd shape because then it's going to come over and come up to meet with this piece and we also have a heater hose from our diesel heater next door that's teed off and coming in here and we're going to have heat coming into the bathroom so we also have to make the outlet for the heater hose on this side and our goal is hopefully our carpentry skills will be good enough, is to miter these two walls um, together in the corner. Instead of doing a butt joint, we're going to 45 it and have a mitered corner, and hopefully that will look nice. And then the, the slats will kind of wrap around and just kind of play nicely off of our pocket door design for this. So that's our plan. We're going to get started with making this piece first, the the backer board part of it. So that's what we're gonna go outside and get started on cutting all of the, cutting that piece of wood and making the hole for the heater and all of that. So we got this piece cut and fit and the heater vent is attached and the next step we're going to do is to make the other 
kind of backer piece that goes on this side, which will be a little bit easier because it's just a rectangle that's 45 on this side to miter in. And then once that piece is done and we have that fit, then we can start working on the slats, but we're gonna go outside and start cutting that piece. So we got this um, other side piece done. I'm kind of having to hold it so it doesn't fall over, but um, the miter turned out pretty good. And so I think we're ready to start cutting the slat pieces and trying to get those also to miter together like this and figuring out our spacing, um, especially over here, like below the tub. And we have to also account for our flooring that's gonna be in here. So we just want the spacing to look right. So that's what we're gonna go work on now. So we got the long side um, all done. We have, well, not done, but we got all the slats cut and fit. Right now they're just laying on here with the spacers in between. Um, a couple things is that we did kind of try and cut the curve around the heater vent rather than just making it straight. And that went okay. So um, one thing that we're doing differently on this for the slats and the finishing than we did on our pocket doors is when we did our pocket doors, we did that with regular birch plywood. So we um, we put a pre-finishing or pre-stained conditioner over the whole thing, which kind of warmed up the tone a bit. And then we put, I don't even remember, I wanna say like four coats of lacquer on the whole entire thing. Um, that was before we found and discovered pre-finished birch plywood, which is like $2 more a sheet and kind of has most of that work done for you. So on this, we're not going through that whole process except for on the cut edges. Like we don't have to do that on any of the top or any of it, but I am gonna put some coats of lacquer just on all the cut edges before we finish this. So that's gonna be the next step is adding lacquer to that to just protect the raw cuts of wood. And then we are going to glue, glue these all down and brad nail them in from the back. And then this side will be done. And then we will start and do the same exact thing on the short side of the tub wall. So this is what that first side looks like with all of the slats now installed. Um, you probably noticed that we changed our plan, which was we thought we were gonna glue and brad nail these all on, but we changed our mind and decided to screw these all in instead. So you can see all of our crazy markings of where things were so we knew where to put screws in. Um, but the reason why we did that, even though We've used this pre-finished birch a lot and like on the walls in the kids room, um, that's what we used and like the backs of the all of our cabinetry, that's what we used. And we glued and nailed that to our furring strips, 
but that was gluing it to like raw wood. Um, we were a little afraid that the wood glue may not stick gluing two pre-finished sides together. I mean, this stuff is really slippery, which we love it because it's so easy to clean. You literally just can like wipe it off with water or pledge or <laughs> anything and everything just cleans right off it really easily. Um, but so we were just afraid with both of those surfaces together that the glue may not hold very well. So that's why we changed courses and decide to screw it all together. But this is what it looks like. And so now we're going to go ahead and go install it to the two by four framework on that side of the tub. All right, so we got this side all installed and we moved on to making the slats for this side. Um, we did it, we installed these just a little bit differently. They are screwed in from the back and everything, but we did not record any of this because we, we actually did the installation of these slats in here so that we could match them up perfectly. And with Juan in here and me in here, like we we're like laying on the floor and <laughs> trying to hold pieces together and clamp them. And there was just like, we couldn't even like find a place to put the camera to record this where you could see anything. So um, just imagine it was like, you know, a clown car. That's what it felt like in here. But um, we did these one by one so that we could make sure that these were perfectly lined up together. And then again, we just, um, once all the slats were installed, we screwed it into our two by fours here on the sides. And so it's all done. Our miter looks pretty good, we think. And uh, we're really happy with how it turned out. It looks kind of cool and um, kind of, you know, we like the way it goes with the door. And then the last thing, well, I say the last thing. I always think it's going to be the last thing until there's like 10 other things that come up. But we still need to make a topper for this, like a lid that's going to hinge up as well as then be um, kind of like a little bench seat here. So we need to figure that out. We still haven't even decided like what material that's going to be made out of yet. But we have to figure out that. But we're really happy with how this project turned out and we'll see what comes next. <laughs>